I love that. So I think Angela's my new favorite coach. We're going to be uh, putting you for hire here. I love it. Hey, everybody. Jared Wright with the Share Group doing what I love the most. And it's having conversations with uh, our customers, our friends here. And I'm lucky enough to be joined by Angela. How do I say your last name? Young. Okay. Yeah. Angela. So, hey, Angela, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? We're good. So... Tell us what market are you in and, and how long you've been doing real estate? Sure. I'm in South Florida and uh, narrowed down. I'm actually in Palm Beach County and I've been in real estate for many years. Oh, right on. So what is your, what's your favorite part about real estate? Favorite part? I don't know why that made me laugh. Um, I think really for me, it's being able to go from getting that lead that you don't know if it's going to turn into anything to actually closing that for me, there's a lot of excitement because I just don't know if you're going to be able to do it sometimes. And when you actually can do it, it feels very rewarding and makes you realize you can keep doing more of that. Absolutely rewarding. I think especially how many hoops you have to go through sometimes with a transaction, the curveballs that you get. For us at the share group on the data side, our job is really easy to hand you guys that treasure map to the gold. But but ultimately, you're going on that hunt. And, and a, lot of the, a lot of the times it's... Uh, it's a definitely a journey for sure. So let's let's talk about how a little different uh, conversation here. A lot of the times we talk to agents who are doing outbound calling, but Angela here has done some outbound direct mail. So do you want to talk a little bit about the campaign you did and then, you know, what what you were expecting and then kind of what what you're going to do going forward? Sure. So I am focusing on absentee owners. Being that I live here in Florida, there is a very large demographic that fits into there. So I knew, first off, I wasn't going to actually do a postcard as the main. I actually did letters that you had to fold up, put a stamp on it, put a return address, and send it out. Yes, it's labor and but I really feel like people respond better. And anytime I've done any type of letter and had someone have to open it up, I've always got a call from that. And it's nice targeting people in that manner. So when I focused in on the absentee list, I sent out around, I did have several people contact me back, but I was actually able to get another actual listing and I have that current listing up now. I would say from the span of time I spoke to this client, it was about a six month back and forth of us talking. And there's a lot of follow-up I sent. I sent him, you know, my CMA. I was able to get him onto my email newsletter and I will eventually to preview his home and then eventually he decided to list with me. And so I find that that's very important. The next steps is what I'm thinking about beyond just that initial, hey, you know, I'm thinking about selling because it doesn't usually, you don't usually have someone say, but you often, I want you to list now and I want to buy now. It's usually a gradual thought process that someone's having. It really the follow up is the most important beyond initial lead contacting you. Absolutely. And and that is so important. And and we try to hammer that home too. It's not it's not just a one and done. It's it's uh, you get someone to respond that raises a, a hand from an from an outbound effort, uh, then the game is on to to making sure you're gonna build that relationship and and provide that. And that's a lot of touches, <laughs> a lot of communication and a lot of follow up, you know. So I think that's that's some really good advice there. As we are rolling into the spring season, we were talking about the weather as I live in Omaha is super depressing, but in South Florida, talking about the, 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 the spring, what kind of advice do you have for, you know, for real estate agents, um, you know, in the market that they're in now? Like, sure. I think that no matter this, then, especially cause I'm in South Florida, it's a very hot market right now. However, that doesn't mean you're going to naturally get business there. I believe that's a stake we have in Florida as the highest and other realtors, in the entire nation. So yep. we're up against a lot. And so whether we're in a good market, whether we're in a bad market, the advertising efforts have to continue no matter what. And really we had the last, you know, last year first, you know, real estate market in 30 years, but we need to use this as an opportunity to say, well, how will I continue to get business? Whatever that is, do it no matter if it's a fantastic market or not. So really for me, also implementing the theory of, if you know you're a real estate agent and you've maybe only been in it for a short amount of time, it could just be 
a time issue, not a talent issue. What I mean by that is there's time that's needed to put into doing all of this. And it doesn't mean you're not good. It doesn't mean that you're not fantastic. It's just that the other agents have been doing this for decades. And they have it, the footprint already in there. Right. This very well was I was a magazine publisher. And it took a while to convince people to buy, you know, print ads for me. And I knew, I realized over almost a decade of doing that, staying the course yielded our results. And it's the same principles in real estate in any form of sales profession yeah. is you have to remember it could be time. It doesn't mean you're not talented. And if you remember, you'll remember to keep going through even when you're not seeing results. That that's uh, that's really good advice. Do you have do you have a real estate coach you refer to, or do you recommend any real estate coaches out there? Uh, I don't have any real estate coaches. I honestly have turned to the YouTube for a lot of fantastic advice, though that can be daunting because everyone has an opinion on what to say. But I really think, as a whole body, no matter what you who you want to look at, it is important to remember that you are a lead generator first and a real estate agent second and really adapting a sales mindset and go into it with that understanding. I think everybody gets their license and there's nothing wrong with getting your license to do a couple side deals. The problem is, is if you want to make it a full-time profession, you realize it's a whole entire mind, body, and spirit understanding of how to do this and not no, to be overwhelming, no. but just adapt that. And if you accept it, you're not so confused by how much it's going to take. And, you know, really the reason why probably 85% or more of agents are doing all the business and the rest aren't, it's just because they've understood that and they've gone 100% into it. And so it can be scary to do that. But yeah. even with the leads that I've gotten from you guys and being able to be consistent, it shows that once you get one little win, you can keep going and use that yeah. as a reminder to. I love that. So I think Angela's my new favorite coach. We're going to be uh, putting you for hire here. I love it. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, so, so enjoy talking to our customers. So we'll, uh, we'll be back in touch, but Angela, thank you so much. And uh, let's have a, uh, let's have a great day. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye.